Hello once again, everyone. So, a bit of a different one for you as well. As I talked about in my last vid, I'm wanting to do a little more content with the backsword and the rapier in the coming year. So, I recently was fighting a little bit of mixed weapons and also talking to my backsword class about fighting mixed weapons. We're going over Hutton's advice uh, for fighting against uh, people from India and Afghanistan. And so with that, the question then becomes about, you know, how do you conduct yourself fighting against other weapons? As mixed weapons certainly happened historically. We've even gone over a little bit on this channel. Um, but it's not necessarily something that has a ton of deep writing. And sometimes it can be odd, right? So what I wanted to go here is not talk about techniques specifically, not talk about any historical advice, talk about my advice, um, particularly in regards to how to conduct yourself against mixed weapon scenarios and get the most out of it. So in this case, I brought my backsword out because this guy I fought many different weapons with. Um, in fact, I've probably fought more mixed weapon fights with this than I have actual backsword on backsword, at least at other events um, with this one. It's still my OG blade, which is even more impressive. I've fought so many weird things. But, so the reason I personally like to do backsword for my base of this is, and this advice will apply to any weapon you seek to fight others with. Uh, doesn't really matter. But backsword in particular, not because it is superior or anything like that, or because I have misconceptions of that, but more along the lines of because it is a system that is meant to fight others, thanks to the military aspect of it. So I like to test myself with this against anything I can. Uh, and I've fought many different things. Sometimes, you know, there are some fights I don't necessarily want to do, but I'll still put myself through them. Um, because the opportunity is presented. So, in general, when it comes to mixed weapons, the first thing you should do is look at yourself, interior. So, let's use the backsword as basis for this. If you have a sword in mind, do this exercise with me. Right? Number one, what are the properties of your weapon? In this case, it is single-handed. I have a basket, so I may stand with my arm extended relatively. I have a predominant cutting blade, a little bit of false edge, decently in the point, relatively mobile. This is encouraging in me to stand left foot, sorry, to stand right foot forward, lunges, nice solid recoveries, slightly on the heavier side of swords. Those are my general properties. Now I need to examine the properties of the system that I do because some person can use this very differently than I might use it. So, properties of the system. I'm mostly focused on defense. I've got my outside, my inside, my hanging. Those are all my engaging guards. Then I've got my slips, and I have my various parries. St. George, inside, outside, inside, outside, half circle. All those are ready to go. Then, of course, you can broaden that out. I've also got the cavalry cover. I have traversal footwork. I have, you know, traversal footwork with attacks. All of this is presented. So, but baseline, at least, these are the properties I'm wanting to stick to. Defensive, strong parries, ready to slip the leg, lunge and recovery footwork. Cool. Now, once you've got that in mind, you have what you're ready to fight the world with. Okay? And most of the time, this should be relatively easy for you to answer, um, as you know, most of the time, you're coming from a tradition. So that is already well in place. But sometimes you may need to, especially if you do more than one system, compartmentalize a little bit. Because, especially when you're fighting mixed weapons, it can become very easy to accidentally end up almost playing the other person's game if you're familiar with what they're fighting. I digress, though. So, those things in mind. Now we need to look at the properties of what our opponent is carrying that day. So, general kind of tier list, right? If you were using a single-handed sword, and they have a single-handed sword alone, pretty even, right? Stick to your main principles, it shouldn't feel all that different. They may move differently, but the concepts are still familiar. If they have an offhand weapon, you are now inferior. Right? And that's just because they have an extra tool that you don't. Um, if you have an extra tool that they don't, then of course there is some change of properties there. But probably one of the most common ones that you'll fight against is someone using a buckler or a dagger. Okay, this changes things rather significantly. Uh, or I'll turn to someone who's very grapple heavy. Uh, so Master Fighters, for example, often going to close in. Okay, that, I'm now aware of that, so I need to start applying my strategy against those things. 
but still, I can still kind of hold my own in that regard. It's just one modifier, right? They have a ready to go, close in or tie up strategy. Okay, not a problem. I also still have that in some regards, but mainly, you know, they're gonna be a little more comfortable with it usually. Second aspect of it, if they are using a superior weapon to me entirely, so not just an additive, but literally superior, a long sword, a bayonet, um, a pole arm of some kind, oh boy, those suck, uh, or a larger shield, things, things that really change the scope of the fight, that becomes a little bit more tricky. In this case now, it's gonna be much more about taking the shots when I can and mostly focused on the defense. Because in this case, I am fighting in the after. I have to respect that they will control the pace of the fight and I'm just gonna have to work from there. So that's the weapon itself. Then you can start talking about the attributes, right? So in the case of, is this a person who's going to use passing footwork? Is this a person who's going to use lunging footwork? Is this a person who's going to do a mix of the two? Is this a person who is gonna favor cutting from one side? Or are they going to favor cutting from the other? Are they going to use wrist cuts? Are they going to use full arm cuts? Will they throw false edge cuts? Are they more point heavy? These are all things to consider based on what you know of their style. And now, this is where we kind of segue. My advice is to try and familiarize yourself with other styles before fighting them. You know, observe the people that you're interested in fighting, watch how they conduct themselves, then fight. But, caveat to that, I like to personally not have a discussion at length beforehand. Now that's not always true, um, and sometimes it has been very beneficial for me to do so, but in this case what I'm talking about is, everyone wants to talk about their sword, basically. Everyone wants to talk about their sword and, and things like that, but I personally find that the conversation after having fought is going to be more beneficial as there's less expectation on the table. So I watch how a person fights, they may have seen how I fight, we fight with mixed weapons. We learn off of each other during the course of that. I'm sticking to my principles, he's sticking to his, in theory. We learn a lot about each other. We start countering each other's principles by applying our system. And then whoever really kind of crumbles first or, or starts modifying things, it can change and go. And of course, then there's always the fun of, do you stick to your principles? Do you let some go for the fight itself, etc. Then afterwards, that's when we can talk in depth about things. So, to use an example, um, kind of of both. I fought quite a few Italian saberists. Always a fun fight. Um, the first time I fought them, I, uh, I, you know, just kind of, I didn't really have anyone to talk to about it, but I stuck to backstory principles, and it went pretty well. Second time, though, was at RASP last year. That time, I was there for that purpose, almost. I fought a couple of them, and then I ended up uh, having a very good conversation and training session with uh, one of the maestros there, Maestro Dobbs. And he in particular kind of framed our unintentional lesson around the idea of here's what they'll throw, what of that can I learn and employ, and also what of that will I do in response? Because he's learning off of me at the same time. And so what that allowed for, because I trained with someone else basically, I had a much better understanding of what was favored beyond just me observing it. And I had a better understanding of, because I got to practice, what I think would work. So in the case of that, because a lot of Italian savers, one, they'll use the point a lot more, and two, they'll fight off of the lunge a lot more, so they'll stay tight to me and cut. That meant that oftentimes I would defend, they'd lunge deep, if I felt the need to, I would shift to keep that defense so my arm didn't come back. And then much more so than against uh, fellow backswordsmen or things along those lines, I would then recover backwards to reestablish that since they would pursue um, things along those lines. That, that's kind of what I'm getting into is that you'll learn a lot more in that regard. You'll start appreciating other systems that you may not necessarily study from the perspective of fighting them. And so that, that's kind of what I wanted to kind of lay the field with. That's my mentality on it, and that's how I, I like to approach it. Now in regards to the actual actions you conduct yourself with, 
That will depend upon what you personally study. In regards to Backsword, I like to stick to this as much as possible. If it's in Backsword, I'll use it. If the situation demands it, I'll use it. Uh, so for example, closing actions, etc. In regards to, you know, I don't normally do the cavalry cover, but sometimes it is warranted to do. Um, you know, using the point a lot more. I definitely have picked that up from fighting the Saberus. Um, when I fought a Polish cross cutter, I started using a lot more traversal stuff as well as occasional left foot passes to blow through his guard. Um, things along those lines. But in regards to how to conduct yourself in the fight itself, there is one universal I can always guarantee for you. Like I said, don't show your hand too early. If you want to fight someone who comes from a different thing, say, hey, I would like to do this. They may ask you some questions, you may ask them some questions, get all the gear sorted out. The, uh, they may be unfamiliar, so get also the sort of calibration, right? You know, Feel what a hit takes from each person, what everyone's expecting, make sure you're all on the good stuff. And then from that point on, you know, arrange for your fight. Best thing to always start with is nice, crisp salute. On guard, and then start off nice and light, right? Start off by making them analyze your movement, you know? And you're doing the same. Advances, probes, you know, changing stance every once in a while, seeing what they're interested in and what they might be willing to take. And from there, start employing your strategy. But I've never had a fight that didn't go well when I started off like this. That gets you ready to go, gets them in the serve right mode, and you start just really taking in a lot of information quickly. So, like I said, bit of a more rambly video, two kind of rambly videos for you all. Um, but I want to talk about it, since it's something that is a near and dear pursuit to me uh, with this, because I want to try and fight many, many different systems with this, because that's kind of what it was made for. Um, and it also is a great way to appreciate and get useful things from systems that I don't have the time to study. Um, I fought side sword with this. I fought a katana with this. I fought, um, you know, Polish cross cutter. I fought a Titan Saberus. I fought other forms of back sword, and I fought Messer. I fought sword and buckler. It's you know, it's worthwhile because this is what people did, of course, historically. You can see that in many different you know evolutions of fighting when different cultures get exposed to others. And as a fencer, I think it would be very amiss for not approaching at least that possibility. Now, bear in mind, you can get more or less out of it, depending upon your approach. Um, like I said, if you just kind of square up and fight, sure, you may learn some things, but you may not get a whole lot of it. I find that this helps me really internalize a lot and just keep becoming a better fencer overall, and specifically, preferably, a better fencer with what I'm fighting the world with. But either way, thank you very, very much for listening to me ramble. We'll go over some other techniques another time.